I asked you what YouTube channels that you know of are known for their great editing. And one of the replies was, yes, theory. From Daniel, if we're being specific. So on another episode of Editor Reacts, we're gonna look at their editing. 24 hours in the highest city on earth with no laws. My scariest travel experience. It's got 7.8 million views, so it's gotta be pretty decent, right? Pressure and breathing. Yeah, that's pretty sick. That looks clean. Anytime this style pops up, I think it looks sick. 4K. All right, the quality's there, so let's check it out. Hey, T Boogie. Just wanted to give you a quick update. We made it to La Rinconada, and it's by far the sketchiest place that I've ever been to. Fights breaking out everywhere. People giving us the looks as we walked around. Yeah, it's... I don't think I've ever been as worried going into filming. I'll give you another update as soon as we leave. Love you, buddy. So within the first 30 seconds, it's already pretty tense establishing the tone of the video and what's going to happen. And whenever you read the title, my scariest travel experience, it suits that pretty well as far as starting off. You know, we got that voice effect here. People giving us the looks. We got this effect right here. There's multiple plugins you can use. And then we got captions as well in the first 30 seconds and pretty much showing you what, what's going to happen later on in the video. Enticing you to stay and witness all of the sketchy stuff that's going on. And you can also tell at the start, there was immediately like a cinematic, what's it called? Like a low tone that really brings the tension in the start of the video. Hey T Boogie, just wanted to give you a quick update. We made it to La Rinconada and it's by far the sketchiest place that I've ever been to. In our pursuit to explore the most unique and extreme places on our planet to tell meaningful stories about them, this one may be the riskiest of them all. Welcome to La Rinconada, the highest human settlement on Earth and heart of the Peruvian Andes. Interesting. We're kicking off with some more upbeat. The pace of the music is more upbeat than the start, obviously. And we got some film burn, uh, light flare, type of transitions going in and out. Now the earth zoom effect here, it's pretty high quality, I'm not gonna lie, but the actual zoom itself kind of stops a little bit abrupt. Settlement on earth. Yeah, so it, it zooms in, but it seems like there's a cut that's really drastic between it being like wide on the earth and then closer up to the actual spot area and the movement isn't very gradual, if that makes sense, as far as this earth zoom effect. But the quality of it is definitely up there when it comes to the visual. Continuing on. In the heart of the Peruvian Andes Mountains, here, amidst the icy peaks and beneath the frigid surface, lies a tale of contrasts, where the dreams of fortune clash with the harsh realities of life at 17,000 feet, 5,200 meters above sea level. 50,000 people. All right. The editing is already picking up as far as graphics go. So we got it starting off at the bottom, and then we got this overlay graphic of clouds. Obviously, the higher it goes, the mountain is above the clouds, indicating how high the altitude actually is, which is a very good representation. And then... And feet, 5,200... And then it looks like we got a like a map background here, which is pretty clean. This overall build is pretty clean. There's a vignette on the edges and uh, yeah, I really like this. It actually looks really good. So let's continue. Meters above sea level, 50,000 people have come here in the most unforgiving conditions in the hopes to find gold and other precious minerals. In its battle frontier-like setting, miners live and work under the brutal Cachorrillo system, trading labor for the chance to find gold. Under this system, they mine for 30 days without payment, only to get a chance to mine. So one, we got some strings going on with the music, kind of building up pace, giving more tension on it. And then we got another graphic here, which is 
another map background style, uh, which looks really clean. And then you can also notice in this, it's a little bit more choppy. Like the frame rate is kind of slowed down. I think I know how they did this, but I actually want to test it out. Sketch elements. All right, so we're just going to use this for the example. All right, so let's just grab a white background, drag it in there. Let's find one of these. Let's go with these two and establish the position. Now I'm just doing this really quick because I want to experiment and see if this is kind of how they did it. And so I'm going to go ahead and grab, drag over an adjustment layer. And then on that adjustment layer right here, frame rate effect, apply that to the adjustment layer. And then you can adjust accordingly. Uh, click done. Yeah, so I think that's how it's done. And you just apply the adjustment layer over the initial effects that you made as far as how I think that would be accomplished. And if you wanna know where the frame rate effect is, I know it's free. I can't remember exactly where I got it from, but if you just look it up, I'm sure you can find it. And also same thing if I wanted to add like another adjustment layer had a handheld effect. or if I wanted to add it to the individual graphics. Yeah, I believe that that is a simple way to establish that kind of choppy graphics kind of look. But anyway, continuing on. Only to get a chance to mine for themselves for one day and often get exploited in the process by the mine owners. Yet the promise of gold continues to draw people from all corners of Peru, reflecting the human capacity to endure hardship in the pursuit of wealth. Today, Amar takes us all the way to Lima, Peru to begin his expedition to La Rinconada, along with our cinematographer friend, Corey. And let me tell you, they had absolutely no plan and no contact to reach once they got there. You found a new place that checks all your boxes. I watched a few videos that I had. So it took pretty much the first two minutes to explain the whole video. I guess, so that first 30 seconds, I guess you, you would consider the cold open. But still, a lot of times, at least nowadays, nowadays, um, YouTube videos usually take about less than, at most, the first minute to explain what's going to happen for the rest of the video. So that's pretty interesting. And yeah, we got, we got some new music. Got a new hit going on here. Some captions. I downloaded on uh, the town, on the plane. Pretty scary. <laughs> we go around the world and we come to very interesting places. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. <laughs> he doesn't speak English. <laughs> Okay, Christian, we have a question. Una pregunta. Una pregunta. Okay. <laughs> Can you drive up to Rinconada? Conduces hasta la Rinconada. Tú. Sí. Sí. Yeah. Okay. So I, I see the colors that they've established from the lower thirds and the captioning itself. To Rinconada. Conduces hasta la Rinconada. Tú. Sí. It's like a light yellow and white, and they have two different colors for each person that's speaking, which is pretty common. A small detail that uh, is very helpful to show the difference between the people speaking. Sí. Yeah. yeah. Okay. For my understanding, at least. Uh, Solo ida or retorno más? Both. Para dos días. Mañana vamos miércoles y vinimos el jueves. Si, si, si. Ok, I think we just managed to secure our driver. <laughs> who's, who's just the driver we met at the airport. Yeah. Give us a decent price and it'll the just, just be with us the whole time. We're off to a right. promising start. Every DM that I've sent to someone that we're going to Rinko, everybody's like immediate response, like, whoa, be careful. Yeah, even even him when we were walking in, he was just like, yeah, it's very dangerous there. Yeah. Like, <laughs> That's the part that is, that is worrying me the most, is like our physical state waking up after tomorrow. Taking in 50% less oxygen for a whole night is very different than... Yeah, jeez. Yeah. We're doing a quick pet stop to just get an oxygen meter and some oxygen tanks. Just because from everything everything I've watched so far, it looked pretty rough. And 
<laughs> not even rough when you get there, it's like rough on the way up there. So, so yeah. <laughs> the higher they went up in altitude on the drive, the more Amar started feeling the invisible challenge of letting Kanada creeping in. Hypoxia. It's like very um, heavy headed. And so the music is very, there's a lot of music changes in this already and it's about four minutes in. But the music is very dramatic now that they're entering the place. I would say a kind of similar style to this when it comes to dangerous cities and stuff like that is the Zombie Land project that I worked on. It was very dramatic and serious, kind of like this. Yeah, as far as similarity between creation of the project, that's what I would say uh, that I've worked on before. So yeah. At altitudes exceeding 17,000 feet, the air holds less oxygen, and each breath we take delivers fewer of those vital molecules to our bodies. The brain, the most oxygen-hungry organ, suffers first. Mental functions slow, decisions become harder, a clear warning from our body that it is struggling to sustain its basic functions. Prolonged exposure without proper acclimatization can lead to, as the body scrambles to adapt, increasing heart rate, blood pressure, and breathing. Yeah, that's pretty sick. That looks clean. Anytime this style pops up, I think it looks sick. Clearly, this stuff is, you know, B-roll stuff that they got online, I would believe. I might be wrong. I don't know. They might have made it by themselves, but this seems like something that you'd be able to get online from Envato Elements, Motion Array, different places like that. Sustain and then functions. prolonged exposure. With You'll notice at the start of this effect, there was kind of like a focus in and out, which I've used before in previous stuff. And it kind of gives it that it's a subtle cinematic way of showing graphics, establishing it just because it gives it that camera feel. And it's also, they have that handheld look over top. And yeah, just the paper look behind it with the map and the drawn graphics there. And it looks like there was a highlight that went across each one. Looks pretty sick. I really am really liking this. Without proper acclimatization can lead to, as the body scrambles to adapt, increasing heart rate, blood pressure, and breathing. And again, moving across whenever it zooms in. One, it zooms in at an angle and then it's also kind of like a focus blur zoom in that initially started the graphic, which is a pretty good similarity throughout. To compensate for the scarcity of oxygen. This is not mere discomfort. It's a certain hmm? To compensate for the scarcity of oxygen. Am I about to expose? The oxygen. I thought I saw something. Listen, I'm not trying to expose. I guess I just did that, but you know, I've mess ups happen. All right. I've made mess ups too. And I'm sure if you go back and look at my previous projects that I've worked on, you could find some, but I knew what that, I thought I saw something and I guess they uh, kind of cut the clip, the graphic a little too early and those B roll underneath that layer that they applied over top. Or it just, I don't know, worked its way in there somehow. But for a split second, you can see it. All right, again, editing's great. Mistakes happen. Let's go. This is not. Not in slow-mo, not in slow-mo. Mere discomfort. It's a survival response to an extreme environment that if not mitigated, can be a fatal health risk. Luckily, due to his previous climbing and skydiving experience, Amar knows what to look out for to identify if he's hypoxic or not. This trip was particularly tricky because obviously we needed the guidance of some locals here in Peru. And I think I posted on Instagram like two or three times. But I think how sketchy all the videos and articles depicted this place just made me realize that I like, I want to take this risk with the least amount of people. We don't know what we're getting ourselves into and I didn't want to bring someone into something where I, I just couldn't guarantee their safety. Last time I was at altitude, it was when I was climbing Mount Whitney for my 27th birthday, <laughs> but we're going two, two and a half thousand feet higher than the peak of Mount Whitney, which is just absolutely wild. Got a driver, no translator, 
and our contact was was one of the miners who was gonna be up there he basically just didn't make it up from from Lima he was supposed to to fly out but we'll, we're gonna find we'll find we'll find, find we'll find someone new a new face <laughs> Quick lunch break, we're about an hour and a half away from letting Granada. Hola, ¿cómo está? Hola, hello. <laughs> que rico o no? <laughs> Safe to say that Christian is fully immersed the, with the vibes right now. Hello. Boy strip? Yeah, the chicos, yeah, no? chicos, yeah. <laughs> what do we got here? That doesn't sound good. We've got 87. 87. You're, you're supposed to be 97 and above. All right, we got a, got a graphic down here showing the, the level. Nice, nice. Pretty much cutting between clips, not too much stuff. Just showing the footage as far as the editing goes. I don't think it's affecting my yeah. vitals yet, but that's not how, how hypoxia works. Wow, 92. 92? Hey, 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 hey. Yo. <laughs> Yo. 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 No. <laughs> no, me! Christian, is this your first time in uh, Canada? Yeah, there was, which has probably ha happened multiple times already, but a lot of J cuts and all that kind of stuff. No, see, no. No, you, you went. No, I just went to that point. That's good. Adventurous, adventurous music, picking up the pace of their travel. Let's see what happens. The drone already says high altitude, fly with caution. Before I even took off, it said that. Well, I think I can safely say that this is the first time I haven't felt any jealousy for missing out on a trip before. You see, when we travel and end up in the middle of nowhere, which tends to happen a lot, we really need our phones to navigate, to translate, and to message our producer, Melly, for help. And for that, we obviously can't rely on the free Wi-Fi from the hotel, which often doesn't work, or use data roaming, which will end up costing us a fortune. Which is why our secret all this time has been using something called Aerolo. It is the world's first e-sync There's an store, ad. Which is a, okay, now back to Peru. This guy went all the way to Paris just to film an ad. I am feeling it. Are you? Yeah, I'm feeling, yeah, I'm feeling so nauseous right now. <sighs> Makes it lightheaded for a second. Christian, the drive driver just told us that we're about to get a first look at the glacier. Wow. Okay, that was pretty nice. We got this acoustic guitar in the background music, which I think is pretty good. And yeah, showing the footage, and then we cut back to the B roll and he hired the keyframes on the music. And so that string, that hit, really punched when it went to the B-roll. Wow. As they were initially struck by the beauty of the mountains, the harsh reality of the surroundings quickly cut the amazement short. Added sound effects, all right. So we got some added sound effects here. And the cuts seem to be on beat with the strings from what I'm seeing. Uh, but I mean, there's a lot of strings, so that could just be how it happens. This just has to be one of the saddest arrivals I've ever had in a, in a place, like from just just gorgeous views on the way up, and then just this sea of trash everywhere. I mean, th that's what happens when 50,000 people settle somewhere they're not supposed to, without the infrastructure necessary for them to be able to live there, and with just illegal mining activity everywhere. 
Well, the first miner that we saw actually looking for gold was this woman on the side of the road. And I think women are not allowed into the mines. So some women here just take up the job to pick up the scraps of the miners and look for any gold that they might have missed in it. Okay, so the tempo is a little bit slower with the music. I wonder if there's anything emotional going to happen soon. But uh, from the music before, obviously we had the guitar with the strings. This is another guitar. This section, I guess, is acoustic as far as that goes. Um, but this is a lot slower. So I'm wondering if it's going to get a little bit more emotional or impactful in this part. I guess let's find out. Adela? Adela. Adela. Con gusto. ¿Cuántos años tú trabajas aquí? Unos cuatro años. ¿Cuatro años? ¿Cuántas horas diariamente hoy trabajas, madre? Ocho horas. Eight hours, wow. Ocho horas. Madre, ¿has encontrado hoy día algo? ¿Has visto mineral? Wow, no, nada. Es que no es diario. No, nothing, no, nothing big. Wow. I see it, I see it, I see it, I saw a gold, a little gold bit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And she's speaking. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's, there's and how much would this be? What would you say, Mami, if you had it? It would be a hour. No, it would be about 10 or 20 centavos. That's what you have to do, to do, to do. ¿Tiene hijos? Sí. ¿Cuántos hijos tiene madre? ¿Seis? Cuatro. Sí, sí tiene hijos, cuatro hijos. Four kids. Ajá. Wow. Ay, madre, te va a dar madre. por las preguntas. Muchas gracias. Gracias, gracias. Sí, por las preguntas, todo. Yeah. Muchas gracias. Thank you. Muchas gracias. Thank you. 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 Thank all right so before we move into this section what i said was you know it, it did fit what was going on they i mean she has kids she wasn't really getting much gold or and how long she's been working how much she works you know pretty uh sad stuff with what's going on here so the music did fit that and the pacing as well when it comes to the cuts you'll notice that it held on different angles uh, for a lot longer than than it normally would so now we move on to this next section yeah first impression for me that it's way bigger than i thought i mean i knew that close to fifty thousand people live here but I guess I didn't like picture what that would look like on the side of a mountain. Okay. There's parts where people are temporary residents yeah. of the town. So they, they, they just come for like mining days or mining months and then they leave. But they say it's between 20 to 30,000 people. And then, then there's the main town, which is more permanent-ish buildings. And then there's these like 10 houses. So yeah. All right, now we got some really eerie music, which obviously they're entering the the really bad or the bad area uh, from what he's saying. And so it fits. Music fits, really setting the tone of what's going on. Let's see. La Rinconada is essentially as close to a lawless town as it gets, and they quickly realized that filming here was going to be a challenge. Amar then spotted some friendly looking miners from a distance, and to his great surprise, one of them spoke English. Here, no, it's, uh, it's dangerous. Yeah, it's dangerous. Dangerous. The attitude to here is 
5,200 uh, meters above sea level. Wow. Notice. How is Let's, how is your oxygen level? Wait, wait, I'm gonna go get the oxygen meter. One sec. Yeah. Okay. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> That's interesting. From earlier in the video, most of the lower thirds were on the left side of the screen. I wonder why they put it on the right. I wonder if they weren't trying to cover up anything or. I don't know. Moment of truth. Wait, my finger? Yeah, I just loved his vibe. I went up I went up to him. He was like, hi, nice to meet you. Speaks speaks English. Wow. Pretty good. 90, Pretty good? 93. 93? 76. 76? Yeah. Wow. 76 on my, and my heartbeat is 111. We are right here in the first day. It's difficult, less oxygen, and then, wow, I went uh, no, in three, four days. You just, your body gets yeah, used to it. Yeah. How old are you? I'm uh, 27 years old. 27. Yes. You knew that coming up here is dangerous, it's bad for health, all these things, right? Yes. Why did you still make the decision to come here? In Cusco, the protest, about the president yeah, yeah. affected, no, and then no tourists, nothing, absolutely. In Cusco, for us to no job, then I so come. after pandemic, uh, it after just became pandemic. really bad. Yeah, okay. really bad. Yeah, and, and come here, no? yes. Yes, I like. No? Yes, a little respect, dangerous. man. Respect, respect. <laughs> here it's more. Uh, yeah, yeah, delinquents. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Basically, it's like the outcasts of society. I think they just end up gravitating towards a place like this where you know you end up with some pretty rough personalities. Thankfully these they are not some of those rough personalities. We're like just by walking earlier we, we could we could just feel like it wasn't it wasn't the best vibe. Could, could we What's plan for tonight? <laughs> no, no plan, no plan. <laughs> No plan. If, if you can be our, our local tour, tour guide and we'll be happy to pay you, of course. it would be amazing to just like see it through your eyes so that we're not just like walking with a camera. But, you know, we want to be with locals and, <laughs> and your smile is just amazing. So, yeah, thank you. Of course. Could we like go for a walk? You tell us, okay, this is where they do this. Where, uh, like around yeah. this place? Yeah, around here. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, but we are going to go tonight to the discotheque. Yeah? Yeah, it's great, great, man. Yeah, okay, let's go. Right. We'll see you tonight. Good idea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, you are YouTubers. Todo, todo el mundo. Welcome. Welcome to Rinconada. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and how, how much would a piece like this? Uh, ¿Cuánto está todo eso? Acá está valorizado de dos quinientos. And would this be like one day's one day's work for you, or, uh, or one week, or maybe in one day, or in one hour, or in half an hour? It depends. What's your luckiest day? Best day? Fifteen grams. Fifteen or fifty? Uh, 50. 50. Wow. 50 grams. Less. Depend. It's depend. Yeah, yeah. Mineral, no? Wow. Sometimes are there or sometimes no yeah. gold toe, no? It's, it's heavier than it looks. I'm <laughs> <laughs> you know it? It is, yeah, it is pretty heavy. Gold is pretty heavy. Yeah, so far they're pretty much just walking through the town. It's a pretty good idea to get somebody from the town, actually. It gives it a little bit more interest uh, seeing it through somebody else's eyes that are actually there. Yeah, so far the editing, there's a lot of captioning uh, so you can understand it a little bit better. And so, yeah, pretty much it. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Like everyone that works here, how much gold do you think every day? Maybe. One kilogram. One kilo. Or two kilograms. Yeah. Less than ten kilograms. Yes. Okay. Tourists, like uh, yours guys, yeah. you know, the people's so, wow. It's not usual, right? Yeah. It's very rare. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Gringo, you know? <laughs> he likes to use guitar, acoustic guitar a lot in this video at least. Uh, I've heard quite a few songs now. That's that's guitar. Let's see if we hear some more. What were you saying about the shower? Uh, just here are there uh, three showers, hot showers. In the whole, in the in entire town? Yes. For 50,000 people? Yes. Three yeah, hot for, showers? Yes. For example, uh, in this street and other street, just yes, three showers, no more showers. Wow. <laughs> Hola, chicos. Hola. ¿Cómo está? Bien. Hello, Mr. Hello. 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 
a machine, no? It's a big stone. Yeah. Grind it. Yes, uh -huh, grind I see, it. I see, I see. No, with water and, uh, and mercury. Mercury. Okay. And mercury. Is, it, is this why people have a, a drinking water problem here? Because mm. mercury is mixed with the lake. Fidel explains to us here that La Rinconada is essentially a ticking time bomb, as the very industry that sustains it is also its greatest threat. There is heavy use of mercury in their gold extraction process, which has severe environmental repercussions, polluting the land and water, with consequences that reach far beyond the town's All border. All right, so something that I do appreciate is the fact that the B-roll is timed with the music on beat, on tempo, uh, for these voiceover sections and stuff like that. It's a small detail that you don't really realize just kind of just watching the video, but if it was off even by a little bit, you could be able to tell kind of, but I understand sometimes you do want to make the cuts not as noticeable, uh, but with this, since the music is so prominent and that kind of stuff, uh, doing it on beat kind of helps with the impact of what's going on. It is also highly toxic and leads to serious health issues for the miners and the wider community, including neurological and reproductive damage. Now, all the lakes and water streams around have been contaminated and become completely undrinkable. The name is Awichita. 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 It is similar like a woman. The woman is sleeping. Ah, uh, like the face and then the, yes. the Maybe chest. Maybe you see no face. Yeah. The yeah. mother earth. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, many years ago, okay. Year, uh, Took me a sec. I don't, it's probably just me. Anyway, you got this drawn on effect going on here, uh, showing the outline of the mountain, and it's tracked with the drone footage. It's kind of like Moana. All right. Yeah, yeah. Mother Earth, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, many years ago, the glacier and the down more. Only in this place now for pollution, years to years less glacier, less glacier, less glacier yeah. for the pollution, yeah, because the people destroyed the, the mother earth, yeah. No, how, how and how, how do you feel about that being here and, and working in mining, but you also you, you care about mother earth and you and you don't like the fact that you have, uh, I caring. recommend that the, yeah. the, my friends please don't leave trash or don't uh, contaminate things. Oh, that's a lot of trash. Man. No, nothing. Yes, we're going to put in the trash. Yeah. No, no leave because other people don't respect it. No, yeah. yeah. Drinking that, the plastic, every, the bottles. Ah. No, this is a problem. No, for me, it's not good. Yeah, man. Yeah, no. Whoa. First of all, I can I can already see it on my face. I'm getting so puffy. I just did that reading and it was 66%. So now we're in danger zone. Man. No. I'm worried. I'm worried about myself too. Yeah, yeah. Amar's oxygen levels were dropping to an alarming low. They had to keep a very close look on him to make sure no serious symptoms would arise and be ready to descend quickly if needed. So he, he's been here for eight years. What was your first memory arriving here? Accident, the mountain, the rock. The, the first thing he remembers here is just an accident that happened. Yes, accident. How, how often do you see people die here? Almost every day. Yeah. Almost. Almost every day people almost die. Almost every day die. In La Mina? Or? In La Mina. And I hear too, in the discotheque, it's too dangerous because that feeling when it's coming, you know, and then, wow, well, it's... Yeah. No, let's get here. Wow. Oh, and when was the last time he saw someone die? Two semanas. Two semanas. In, huh. in other streets, you see, no. People. It's just. Oh, yes. Sure. Yes. Oh, wow. Okay, so we have to be careful. Yes. <laughs> Once the sun goes down, this camera goes down with it. <laughs> no, don't worry. Because, yes, me help you with everything. Yeah? My brother. My so brother. For example, the guy is not. <laughs> so you're a magnet to the good people. You attract yes, good people. Yes, yes, yes. 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 Thank you, man. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go 
all our groceries, aka dinner for tonight. We got a window. Nice. Corey went outside. To it's a screen, but I mean, I bet they have like their laptops and all that stuff. So yeah, I mean, as far as the editing goes, the pacing is pretty much just going through. Uh, we got another music change and yeah, it's kind of just doing what they do. Got about eight more minutes. Let's see what else there is. Corey went outside to film the town at night, but came back quickly after a sketchy interaction. A guy came and I like, tried to focus my lens, and typically it's like playful. I'm like, yeah, sure, this is how you focus. And then he was like, how much? And I was like, I'm not, I'm not gonna say. Like, I don't know, you know, I don't know. And he was like, okay. Snagged my water bottle, just starts running, <laughs> and I'm like, what? But it was only water, so I was like, it's okay. But. That was, that set the tone for me. Right after that, I was like, okay, I don't want to carry my camera around anymore. I don't want to do this. Like, <laughs> this is too crazy. Some of that, man, you really got to worry about with some of these places, you know, camera equipment, because most of the time it's pretty expensive, right? My brother has a video where they literally broke, he was robbed twice in, where was it? San Francisco, that's where it was. And yeah, this stuff, especially with camera equipment, man. You really gotta watch your back. And so I understand what this what this guy's talking about. I'm pretty grateful, man. We just like came with nothing and made friends immediately. We were given the clearest instructions not to leave with anything valuable from this hotel. They were telling us pretty had quite the footprint when we came. We were more liberal with our camera, like shooting and drone flying than, than other people's have been here. So our driver, Christian, was just uh, concerned that someone would have like marked us as a, as a target. So he actually gave us pretty sound like security instructions and what to do, how to get out, always be watching for people um, behind you. But he's saying within half an hour, like nice. this outside is just like going to completely change. It's just going to be just drunk people who could stab you any moment so maybe go out for like a quick hangout with no cameras just like with fidel and his other friends to see what nightlife is here yeah we're gonna try and like be with the good vibes avoid anything that looks sketchy but ultimately call it early tonight and just be back here ready for a night out in the most dangerous town in the world <laughs> Yeah, so the music is picking up pace again, giving tension in what's going on with the with the section itself, but adding small clips like that. Ready for a night out in the most dangerous town in the world. Builds on top of the tension that you're trying to portray because they're going out at night, which is what he was just explaining. Pretty, uh, pretty scary at times because people can steal stuff, do all that, and so... Adding short clips like that, especially before, of course, he filmed it, uh, but in the editing process, you know, you got to pick out the clips and all that. So uh, it helps build the tension with what's going on. Up the night with Fidel. He's got work tomorrow, super early at another mine. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Appreciate Thank it, man. You. Thank you. I appreciate it too. No goodbye. No goodbye. No goodbye. See you later. See you later. Bye. 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 It's so cold. I can't sleep. I'm at 70% blood oxygen level, which is an improvement from 66%. So that's about safe. Just went out, just saw, it got to experience a very different life than anything that we've ever seen before. Yeah, there's always like an element of just deep gratitude for the life that we've been blessed with. To just have a hot shower and to be able to have a proper roof on your head. The, the floor here is like unbearable to walk on. And it's these little things that you start to take for granted. There's so many people go to the craziest extents to be able to make ends meet. 
Just some thoughts with my funny my long johns, some heat socks, and we'll see you for sunrise for some pretty epic drone shots by the one and only Corey Martin. Got a little riser there, uh, wherever he was just doing that, and then it cuts to the drone shots going to the I'm going to assume last section of the video because we just got a few minutes left, and so let's see what we have in store for the rest of this. Corey Martin, I just missed the keyboard. sleep in fact no sleep at all i think i had like 45 minutes i have one of the strongest headaches i've ever had i feel dry everywhere i counted i peed i peed eight times in nine hours which is just a lot i wasn't even drinking that much water which i should have um let's see how Corey's doing <laughs> i'm glad they put the the explanation of why he's saying that because if they didn't put that you'd be like why in the world is he talking about that good decision there that was good I wasn't even drinking that much water. Just should have. Um, let's see how Corey's doing. I have a massive headache right now. Yes, I, mean, I, I swear, going to the bathroom felt like my heart rate when I. By the time I got back to bed, I was just being. It felt like I just ran a mile. Yeah. And I, that's when I got like a little scared. I was like, "Is this? Is this okay?" So we got a quick check. Not beeping yet. <laughs> well, this is better than the night. The night I was beeping between 65 and 70. Now it's 75. out to just capture some of what's happening in the morning and we're still getting those very long stairs people confused in what we're doing here with a okay. with the red and the camera like that yeah doing here something with a, like that i mean you look at that you already know that you could get some good money from selling that so yeah walking around with that especially at night could be a little bit uh, scary gotta be cautious the red of the camera like that. I was reflecting on like how I'm feeling and 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 just this ex this very intense experience that we went through, and I, it's like torn between like just such extremes, like waking up at the bottom of a glacier, seeing the most beautiful view, but be they've done this multiple times, and I believe they're adding sound effects behind the drone shots like wind and stuff like that which is a very small detail but if that's what it is it's pretty nice that it's they're paying that much attention to add that go out of their way and add the the sound effects dreams like waking up at the bottom of a glacier seeing the most beautiful view but being up during the night and hearing what was going on in the town and hearing gunshots and hearing people scream and hearing, hearing people drunk breaking bottles it's it's, it's, it's this weird paradox between like being in one of the most beautiful places that you can be on our planet, but also seeing the worst of what human beings can do to our planet. fight that breaks in the last yeah. half an hour. I think. A lot of hostility. Yeah. Maybe that's our sign. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Get get out of here. <laughs> oh wow. Yeah, I think this is the best like vantage point to actually grasp how fifty thousand people There's the starting shot right here at the very end. The starting shot. Yeah, I think this is the best like vantage point to actually grasp good how fifty thousand people live in the highest city in the world. We had managed to fly the drone five kilometers to just show the scale of what's happening out there. Apparently where the glacier is, is where the most amount of gold is. So they are very keen to just get through it. It's really dangerous because there's tunnels that are inside of the mountain underneath the glacier. There's nobody caring about the structural integrity of, every, of anything. So it's, it almost feels like a ticking time bomb that the mine has been operating since the 70s and hundreds of thousands of people have come through 
to do this and, and it's just layers upon layers upon layers, no proper uh, inspection. I pray that people stay safe and that the government does something about it before it becomes this catastrophic you know, news headline of thousands of miners just dying because one of the shafts collapsed or something like that. My intention as we leave this is just like be reminded, like, you know, we're talking about how exciting it's going to be to take a hot shower when we get there, to be able to like have a seat for the toilet, you know, <laughs> like all these little things that we kind of dismiss in our daily life and we don't really think deeply about. I think trips like this and being in places like this really gets you to like recognize the blessing that it is to be living a life where you don't need to, to, to do that. You don't need to leave everyone and everything you know to come to the most dangerous circumstances to be able to make a living thank you everyone for joining true and thank you Corey for just being the, the wizard behind the camera behind the drone and, and we'll see you next week you haven't said that in a very long time but we'll see you next week nice yeah i mean that was pretty good a nice uh, ending soundtrack there or an ending piece Overall, the whole video had a good message to it. You gotta be thankful for what you already have. You know what I mean? And as far as the editing goes, I mean, it did what it's supposed to do and it was put together. It gave it that eerie feeling that you wanted and, and the tension that you need in a project like this. And the areas that were a little bit more emotional, a little more sad, the tempo changed accordingly and it's an overall, you know, good video. It makes sense that it got 7.8 million views. That was Yes Theory. Finished my sparkling water. I think you'll like this reaction that I did. You can click on it if you want to check it out. I'll see you at the next edit.